All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Brevard Sports Network. And I tell you what, uh, our guests just keep growing and growing. And tonight, I'm honored to be here with, uh, I got to be honest, one of my favorite all-time uh, players here in Brevard County. You know, I always call you guys student-athletes. So, student-athletes here right. in Brevard County. Uh, he is none other than uh, J.V. Hawkins, former Coco Tiger, former Louisville Cardinal, and now – NFL draft prospect. Jay, how you doing, man? I'm great, my dude. How you doing? I tell you what, man, things are looking up. I, I Obviously, for you, getting set for the NFL draft coming up, we're going to sit here and reminisce a little bit. So let's just start there. Let's go back a little okay. bit, if you will. Appreciate let's go back. Let's, too, what's yeah. that? I say appreciate the praise. Oh, man, you know, all day long, man, all day long. There you are on the screen wearing number three for the Coco <laughs> Tigers in your senior season, Jay, but take me from your youth football day. Where Tell everybody where you played youth football and how you came up playing football in Brevard County. All right, so uh, I, I started off playing flag for the Bears. You know the Titusville Bears. Oh, yeah. Bears. Uh, we won the Super Bowl one year. Actually, I believe two years. Bunch of kids on that team, man, who grew up. We all just athletic, speed, and it's crazy to see us all just grown men now uh, and Evolving in the world. But uh, after that, you know, my first tackle season was with uh, North Brevard Hawks with uh, Derek Campbell and his staff when they first started. And we was we was terrible. My first year, <laughs> my first year, we was 0-8, man. And, you know, uh, I remember the first game we played, you know, uh, Mason Dinnerberg from uh, Merritt Yeah, Island. yeah. Yeah, he was on that team, and they beat us to sleep. I remember it was like <laughs> <eight> zero. <laughs> but after that season, honestly, it was up from there. It's like the following year, we went undefeated, and every other year, we went undefeated uh, with the Hawks. So, yeah, you know, and and then you start, you go. I think you go one year where you go to astronaut. One year, two, two, two years at astronaut, and uh -huh. then uh, transferred over to Coco uh, with Coach Wilk, where things just really blossomed. Uh, over there for you, you know, I'm, I'm going to get this up on the screen because in two years at Coco, uh, it's sick. It's absolutely sick what you did over there. 2,578 yards and 38 touchdowns. That's not a, that's not a career. That's two years there. I want right. you to talk a little, I saw coach Wilk a couple of weeks ago at the key to the city for Jamel D. I didn't get a chance to talk to him. Um, but talk about playing for coach Wilk and, and what he meant to you and what he was able to do in terms of, getting you right for the next level uh honestly man coco is college uh, I, that's as simple as it get like just going to that next level it's just like it's a bunch of dogs around dogs and with that type of coach it's like forget football like he'll let everybody know on the field like you might not be able to go to the next level like you five eight you play your lineman like it was just <laughs> real and cutthroat and blood it was just like that type of coach like even though you playing like he's not gonna let you waste your potential at all in practice through the games like practice up until game boy well, it's the practice is harder than the game honestly coach woods is that type of dude like practice made perfect and honestly that's why it was so easy because we worked so hard in practice you know i tell you i i got a kick out of watching you just practice not just with coco but I love watching you work, Jay, like with uh, with, with with Eddie and and uh, I, lo I love watching you run that hill. Um, talk about the importance, man, of working away from a program working, you know, because of COVID last year, I got a chance to run into you guys a little bit over in Vieira and then up at the hill. And but a lot of where you are right now is because of the work you put in away from Coco, away from Louisville. Talk about that. Uh, so honestly, it's just like after a point in time, you got to realize like everybody's good. Like you can't just work off talent no more. Like hard work, big talent. When talent won't work, you know the saying, everybody know the saying, but that's just as simple as it is. It's just like I knew where I wanted to go and I knew what I had to do. So whenever I got free time or I was bored, it was just like I wouldn't. That's what I like to do. I like to go work out, free my mind. That's what I love to do, really. So. It wasn't too much other things I was interested in besides hanging with the boys. So it was just like football, football, football. And when I got to that level of high school and me and Coach Eddie and just mixing what I knew with what he knew, it was crazy, man. Eddie's going to join me tomorrow night because he's got some good stuff going on too. We're here with JV and Hawkins, NFL draft prospect, man. And it really tickles me to be able to say that on the screen right now 
our highlights of you at Coco High School. When I look back at your career at Coco, there is one game in particular that stands out. It wasn't the state championship game um, because you guys ran through bowls like, you know, I mean, it was unbelievable. It was like almost 500 rushing yards. But to me, my favorite game for you was up in Jacksonville, and I don't even remember the name of the team, for goodness sakes. But you had uh, – it was a tough game, man. You had uh, two touchdowns in that game. Uh, we went up there, and they came back down. I think this is the team that played you guys on the ESPN Sunday game. Who? What team was that? Talking about Trinity Christian. Uh, Trinity Christian. How you – what a game you did when you look back on your high school career. What uh, you can't say the state championship now, okay? Right. What are some highlights for you? Uh, definitely both Trinity Christian games. You know, like it was the first game of the season for both years, and that first year it was on ESPN, and it really was up from there. Like, I remember one thing I was uh, I got really excited about coming to the uh, sideline after scoring that touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Will was like, welcome to Coco PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I got to ask you about that nickname. Tell tell everybody who don't know, and I'm sure most most people do, how'd you get the nickname PlayStation? Uh, coming up, Coach uh, Hondo or my dad, like my dad called me because of Game Freak. Coach Hondo got everybody jumping on the wave just because, like, the way I played, like, some of the stuff I did, and I was always on the field making plays, and yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like, I can't even move my thumbs with some of the stuff he did. <laughs> <laughs> but, nah, the kids just ran with it, man. It's a blessing, really, because it was fun, and that, it created a drive in me, too, like, knowing and hearing that, like, when we'd travel, go out of town, because, you know, in Part Warner, we wasn't playing county. We was traveling, so Coach Dan was taking us places, and you hear kids like PlayStation them coming to play uh, like this and that. Like they on the way down here from North Brevard, PlayStation this, PlayStation that. So it was definitely fun, man. I miss it. All right. So I'm going to ask you about this. So that was some of the fun times at Coco State Championships, the over bowls, Trinity Christian getting both wins over them. Um, what, what, what did you learn from a loss to a team like Bishop Gorman? Uh, honestly, <laughs> just you got to be prepared. Like, Bishop Gorman's one of those teams where it ain't no error. Like, there's no room for error. You got to be on your A game. Like, you can't beat that team making mistakes. And if you go back and watch the film and break it down, it was like we was in there until we started making mistakes and we weren't getting the calls that we wanted. And we just we, – we, we wasn't focused at that time, like, knowing, like, we got to play together. Forget the refs. Forget where we at. Let's just do it. Like, we're going to mess up. And we weren't there yet. So – you had a butte in that one too, man. I think it was like what eighty something yards in that one down the sidelines. They yep. were chasing you in that one too. Uh, remember watching that game? I couldn't even I couldn't even play to my full potential after that touchdown because I sprained my ankle. That's if, right. If and you then, walked all the way through, I that know. would go on to um, spring another Coco star in Willie Gaines, who would come yeah. in and 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 then you know Willie is. God bless him. You know, Willie has stayed on God's path and, and he's doing good things. Um, the recruiting process for you, um, as you look back on it now, as you get prepared to go into the National Football League draft next month, as you look back on the recruiting process, did you make any mistakes? Are you satisfied with everything you did? Uh, and what advice do you have? Uh, honestly, I didn't make a mistake or any mistakes at all. I could have definitely like viewed my uh, resources more and took advantage of all the schools I had because I only took uh, one official. I mean, I went to a bunch of schools like I was at UCF all the time, Florida. I went to Miami, but I didn't really visit all my officials. So to all the kids coming up, make sure you go to all your schools, your top five, go and view, view your View your options and make sure you're making the right decision. And just really talk to your mom, and your mom ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> That's right. Um, great experience, and it was. I made. I made the right decision. I'm happy with it. Well, I tell you what, you did some remarkable things at Louisville, and I'm gonna pop those highlights up on the screen here right now because. Watching you play at Louisville. Well, that's the wrong ones. Watching you play at Louisville. Uh, you just. I love tuning in on Saturdays. Hawk, because I just knew you were going to break a run. And when you look at your career at Louisville, it's amazing. Uh, we're going to talk about your freshman year coming up. But at the sum of it, uh, as a redshirt freshman, you broke the school record for rushing yards by a running back, 1,525 on 264 carries, nine touchdowns. But none of that was the most impressive to me. What was most impressive to me, Hawk, 
was you didn't fumble the damn ball. I love that. Talk about right. how do you carry the ball that many times and don't put it on the turf? Uh, really, it was just a mindset thing. And honestly, I was out to prove myself right. Like, this is what I want to do. And I know I can do it. And <laughs> but I couldn't. So playing the game, man, it's just like, that's my baby. Or well, as Coach Eddie know what we call it, and all the boys who train, it's something. Right. Can't say it, but it is what it is. You don't want nobody messing with that. It's just like it's yours, so keep it protected. And I coach harped on it like the ball is the program. That's all he always said that. And if you put the ball on the ground, you couldn't play. But it just all came down to just having fun, knowing what I had to do, and not forgetting that the ball was on my side. And the one time you did put it on the ball on the ground last year, you made national headlines with <laughs> 10 push ups in the middle of the game. That's a mindset, too, isn't it? Yep. Get it in right now. It's a punishment. Like, get your work. You don't, yeah, because you don't, you definitely yeah. don't want to be doing that. Your red shirt year. Um, I can remember going back. I saw you at Camping World Stadium against Florida State. You had suited mm -hmm. up in the first game. You were in the end zone. We kind of looked at each other. Um, you weren't yet smiling. Right. I was, I was following you, obviously, through Twitter, reading some of your tweets. Tough year that first year. Talk a little bit about that and what 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 that did for you in the next two years. Uh man, it just it put another fire and drive in me that I didn't know I had. Like like you said, it was a tough year. Like coming up, I'm all, I've always been on the field. Like I've been playing since I was four, playing both sides of the ball, really every position, and it was new to me. Like I wasn't playing at all. Like no special teams. I was not seeing the field. And I'm a football guy, so if I'm out there, I'm happy. And it was just tough, like, not being around it, man. And, you know, I just had to keep that mindset of head down, chin up, like, don't get down. Just just keep grinding and wait your turn. But it definitely was something I had to deal with and cope with and get through, man. It was tough, but I, I made it. I made it through. When you got on the field, you, you, you just you proved your point and that you were never going to come off the field. Um, talk a little bit about when you see and you look back at your career and you all, you, you know, you broke the school record and what you did last year. And I don't think there was anything else there for you to accomplish. I mean, in a COVID year, I mean, I love Louisville. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I got the cocoa gear on tonight, but I mean, it's, look, I don't think you guys had a team that was going to win a national championship in the next two years. So you did everything that you were going to do there. Didn't you? Yeah. I mean, I feel like, uh, after making that decision, it was definitely more I could have done. But like you said, I pretty much did probably yeah. everything I could do. So uh, it was just, it was great, man. Like those two years, it was just it was just a humbling experience and a blessing. Like just to do it and do it at that level, that high level. Is there one guy now? A couple of years ago, I had the privilege to interview Lamar Jackson, uh -huh. and great guy. At the time, he was a week away from winning the Heisman Trophy. Uh, just an outstanding young man. He actually spent about six, ten minutes with me, and then he ends up getting drafted by my, my my team out of Baltimore. Is there a mentor or a player that you had there that you looked up to, whose advice you followed? Um, who who was that guy for you at Louisville? Uh, just overall, just coming to college, I was that type of player. It's like I love the game. I'm in school. I was I was at all of all. All the old dudes, like all the upperclassmen, really. But my first year, I definitely say uh, Jalen Smith. He used to chat it up with me a lot and just tell me to keep my head on, like your time gonna come, blah blah blah. But a lot of those dudes, like we all, ha we all had fun off the field, like Gigi Robinson, Money, all the older dudes. Like you said, ain't nobody in particular, but definitely the past brothers, Kane and Puma, them my big bros. I remember Lamar telling me um, after, cause. Uh, when I had interviewed, I, I remember talking to him after the LSU game because what he didn't know was he was coming back to Camping World Stadium to play the Tigers in the bowl game there. And he took one pretty pretty good on the chin that day. And I, I, oh, yeah, he sure did. And I remember him telling me after the game, I said, well, I said, uh, hey, let, let, you know, what'd you learn? He's like, I learned I'm ready to get into the NFL. <laughs> He's like, I'm, right. I'm ready to go, you know. <laughs> um, the the to, to get to this decision, to get to this process, um, you know, what advice would you have for those out there that not, you know, we've already talked about high school to college, but there are a lot of young men in Brevard County who will be where you are in the next two years. 
what would you tell them? What are, what are some of the most important things that, that need to come to front of mind when you're making a decision to declare for the National Football League? Just make sure you got your mental together and your support system, which is like I said before when we talked the other day, like football is easy. We've been doing it since we was little. Like, so that should come last. Like, just make sure you're taking care of your body. You're mentally prepared. You're attacking each and every day like it's your last because really you don't know when it's the, your last snap going to be. Like, football not forever. And a lot of these scouts and NFL coaches been harping on that. Like, NFL, it stands for not for long. So just take care of your mental and your body away from the field, and you're going to be all right, man. Just be the best you. What have you been doing with yourself? And I know the answer to this question, but um, what have you been doing with yourself since you declared? Um, take people through what it is you're doing on a daily basis because people think you declare, you might go lift some weights, maybe you do some running, <laughs> but it's a lot more than that. Talk about this. Yeah, man, the process is definitely long, but I'm enjoying it. And it's a great experience, man, just to do it because, like you said, not everybody gets to do it, but – and I counted, we got a lot of dudes coming to do it. And it's just like, so starting in December, the first month, it was kind of light, like the first couple of weeks, just introducing it. We had one of days, uh, Monday through Friday. But when we got rolling, it was Monday through Saturday. And we had to get up at 6.30. We was leaving at 3, sometimes 4 some days. And we getting interviews, coaches. You don't know who you're going to talk to one day. One day you might be on the phone with Chicago. Next day you might be on the phone with L.A., scouts more scouts interviews it's just it's just football 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 so prepare for that man because it ain't all just training you know i'm looking at here and here and i want to read you something here um and, and and this is something that um that you know i'm going through reading your your draft analysis hawkins shows fantastic burst through holes and is extremely elusive in space his short area quickness and lateral, agility, uh, lateral agility uh, consistently stand out, and he is a natural elusive. He has natural elusive ability in open field. Hawkins does a great job of keeping defenders off balance and uses his. Uh, it, it, here's where I start. Like you know, come on, man, he ain't that. His small stature, because you're big up here, to his yeah. advantage to limit his to, to limit his exposure to the defense. More than anything, he's just a slippery player who has a knack for staying on his feet and shaking off defenders in space. He will and can make a significant first-year impact at the next level. When you hear that, what goes through your mind? Just like get ready and be ready. And I tell, I've been telling the coaches, like, my goals, like, I know I'm ready and this is what I've been preparing for. And like that analysis said, I can do that stuff. So really it's just like, don't blow your head up too high and don't get too low. Just, just stay level-headed and be ready for whatever come your way. How big is next week, Louisville's Pro Days next week? How, how, how I mean, it's everything. Talk, talk about – do you have butterflies for this stuff? I mean, talk about it. I'm excited, man. Definitely butterflies. Definitely get the butterflies still. If you don't get butterflies about something you love, man, you need to stop doing it. But right. It's definitely exciting, man. We got a lot of guys that's training and that's been training and getting ready to just show what they've been working for to this point. And everybody feel like they got something to prove. And you know they um they actually letting the guys who didn't get a pro day last year come back and uh, do their pro day as well. So Oh, man. Uh, so, it's yeah, it's going to be a lot of people. Yeah, okay. All right. And, you know, the good news is, is that uh, stay tuned here for those watching. There's a lot of people watching. Here on Brevard Sports Network, we will – uh, replay all of Hawks Pro Day uh, stuff once it's uh, uh, able to go live. And a lot of times, the NFL Network will yeah. show Pro Days live. And should they do that, we will, wink, wink, make sure you see it live as well. I promise you'll see it right, right. here on the Brevard Sports Network. Well, what do you do to relax, Hawk? I mean, because, you know, preparing for the NFL draft, you got to stay out of the spotlight, so to speak. You got to be careful with this, that, and the other. Obvious. I mean, those are the obvious things. But how do you relax? I mean, what are you doing for, for fun? Uh, for fun, I love the game. I've been out quite a much this uh this off season, but nothing big. I've been I love the beach, just freeing that mind. I meditate a lot and I'm big on video games, man. Just chilling with the boys. Of course you are, PlayStation. Why wouldn't you be, right? <laughs> um, 21 years later, ain't nothing changed. 
That's right. That's right. I got you. I, I'm 51. I love to play some PlayStation. Ain't no doubt. Um, a couple more for you here before we let you get back to work. And, and, you know, as you look back over your career and as you get set for the, um, who are some people out there? I mean, take your time, man. Talk about some of the things that you've gone through with people with, I mean, just the, you know, all of it, just, so how would you summarize this? This is a big month for you. Yeah, man. So, do you want the good and the bad? Or? Yeah, give it to me, man. Give it to me. Man, it's tough, really. Just like, you can't trust everybody. Everybody's not for you. You got to learn to say no. Like that. Love how, soon, I, how soon did you learn that everybody's not for you? When did you learn that lesson? uh definitely my uh true not my true freshman year my uh no actually my true freshman year i was about to say my red shirt freshman year when i started playing like everybody started to come back out the woodworks but definitely that true freshman year is just like i went under and it's just like i wasn't really getting hit up or checked on and just out of the blue everybody's just checking up on me like you good all right you got this you got that but it's like when i wasn't balling where were y'all so right in situations in, in school too where you just like you know you might be out in school and you create a relationship and then it might not be what it is and you ain't at home no more where you got your parents right with you and keep you you a grown man not like you living on your own so you got to go on about your day and learn the hard way yeah no doubt about it and i tell you what um I can remember after seeing you, I, I don't know if you remember this, but I sent you a message on Twitter, like the message thing. I was like, man, just keep your head up. Yeah, and, and, yeah I, I, I know. Cause you responded to it. You responded, I like, yeah. I was like, keep your head up, man. It's going to yeah. happen. It's going to happen. Um, well, you know, it, it's just, you know, you're going to be, you know, you look at, uh, t you know, Chauncey, Jamel, Jawan, um, man, you're going to be the fourth Coco Tiger in the last four years to be drafted into the national football league. Now that's huge, man. No other, no other high school. And I'll look, and I'm sure I'm putting my foot in my mouth on this one. Um, but I would be willing to bet no other high school can make that claim. That's a special thing. Yeah, it is, man. Big yeah. shout out to Coco, Coco nation. <laughs> Do you stay in touch with those guys? Or you talk to them or they just oh, doing yeah, their course. thing? Yeah, we still, we got group chats. We hit each other. The love does like once a tiger, always a tiger. So, what advice did they okay? Draft day, I've interviewed a lot of guys that have gone one way or the other on draft uh -huh. day. It, it, you know, it is a process that will tear your guts out, is what yeah. I'm told. Uh, what advice have you been given from guys that have been there? You know, you, you're going to hear leading up. You might think this team's going to take you here. Never Maybe know. you fall here or you jump up here. How are you going into this? What is the mindset going in for you? Honestly, it's like I don't I don't care if I get drafted first or seven, just like you said, because guys can be predicted to get drafted in the second round and go fourth or third round and go seventh. But like you said, it's just a humble approach. Like, like you said, I know what I can do. I know what I'm capable of. And I got a good agency behind me. So uh, I got a great shot. And wherever I get picked at, man, I'm just, I'm just ready to get out there and show what I can do. Well, I tell you what, man, we, we couldn't be, uh, we couldn't be more proud of you and, and everything that you've accomplished. I'm going to give a shout out to Xavier Edwards too, because these are his video clips. Um, I, we, we just couldn't be more proud of you, not just Hawk for, for what you've done on the field. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I've always pride myself in is, 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 is what you guys do off the field and paying as much attention to that. What did it mean to you on Saturday? Uh, I thought this was one of the coolest things of the day I saw on Saturday. There were former NFL players up there. JT was up there running around, you know, when I looked at, at the guy that had the most youngins around him, it was you giving back to the community. What does that mean to you, giving back to the community? And then when you looked around at all those kids standing there, what, 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 take me through what that mindset is. I, honestly, I see a bunch of a younger me's. Like, it's just, it's a feeling I can't describe. Like, like I told you, the mind, it's a crazy thing. And when you put, put your mind to do something and you, attack it like the kids i see they, they got that fire in their eye like none of us in titusville we ain't never been in no camp at the ages four through what was it 18 right and it was a lot of kids out there like 
13 and under, and you can see that they hungry. Like, they hungry to do what we doing, and they only in fourth, fifth grade. Like, it's crazy, man. It's crazy to see those kids coming up, how they coming up. It was awesome to see you interact with them. And you know what I thought was the best? When, when I asked you what advice you had for the, the young student athlete that was standing next to you, he was kind of just staring off in the distance. You said, you listening to me? <laughs> he t- he, he <laughs> turned around. He turned around. He snapped right up. He listened. Yeah. Um, well, look, man, I I can't thank you enough for taking almost a half hour with us here tonight. And, uh, I would, I would ask him one thing. I would ask that you, uh, as busy as you're going to be coming up, check in with us after you get drafted, man. Love to hear how the process went for you. Um, you know, if there's anything we can do, we're here and, uh, God bless you, man. We love you. You know, Brevard County's on your side. Thank you, man, for, uh, for coming on here tonight. Nope. Appreciate you and appreciate y'all, man. I love y'all. I love you guys. You know, I told you my favorite dude, but uh, it's love for each and every one of y'all. And nah, if it's not the Brevard, man, we on the way up. I tell you what, get used to that behind me. I don't know if you can see it, your name in the marquee, <laughs> man, right there. I get see- used to seeing it. Mr. Javian, PlayStation Hawkins. Hawk, thank you so much. And uh, you have a great night. You too, my dude. Take care. Take care, buddy.